So uh, today, today, if all goes uh, good, if all goes good, if all goes good, today. So if all goes good today, we're going to be installing FreeBSD on our server. So the server we're going to be installing it on is not going to be on the local host, but it's going to be on a remote host. And we're going to be running X over SSH. So what that's going to go ahead and do is that's going to actually transfer the window over to us. So whenever we run the application, instead of it running on the remote machine, it's going to run our local machine, which means our machine. So I'm going to type in SSH-X. The X means uh, for uh, forwarding the actual visual you know, application over to the local side. Whenever you execute it, so I'm going to do this in the Burp Manager. So here's my server. Here's we're saying we're using uh, X forwarding. And there's the application we're running. Now I'm going to do this because, uh, and then as you'll see, it loads up right there. Now, uh, this is Windows 7 right here. Well, actually I lie. This is actually server like 2008. I was doing some testing. I forgot to change the name. So the name is actually server 2000. Oh, snap. Can't change it? I guess you can't change it. Well, I'll force it off. Don't ask me again. Yes, force off. Let me change this. Otherwise, it's going to get on my nerves. So, let me put server to 2008 like that. And then I'm going to hit apply. Uh, after I hit apply, I'm going to go ahead and go to um, file. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and do a new virtual machine. And then I'm going to go ahead and type in, uh, well, since we're doing FreeBSD, which by the way, if you are hosting a server of any kind, if you're hosting a server of any kind uh, and you want something really stable, I recommend a FreeBSD. Uh, FreeBSD, uh, in my opinion, uh, the elitists have a very elitist philosophy in the way they use it. Everything is well organized. Uh, for example, your RC config file, uh, it's where your services start, your configuration is, it's like, it, 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 it makes so much sense, it's not even funny, and you're not wrestling the operating system as opposed to like Debian, where you have one package, and then one package installs the other package, or then it installs this package, and then you do this, and you're essentially like going back and forth, and you have to like at mark hold, and then this, and then this configuration gets overrided by that. FreeBSD, uh, they've masked, they've, it's, it's yeah well the bsd guys have always been a little more uh elitist than the linux guys so anyway that's besides the point so we're gonna go ahead and go uh download free bsd like that and then i'm gonna go ahead and click on uh download free bsd right there uh and then i'm going to go ahead and scroll around and see if i can figure out what i'm doing and if i know what i'm doing no, kidding so right around here yeah you're gonna see vm images here uh free bsd 14 current so we're gonna want this one right the latest and greatest nice and awesome cool uh, vm images are available for md64 installer sd cards are available for let's just go over here okay so if we look through here let's see what we can find here so this is the file size uh, these things are huge uh, let's see which IZs. so here we got a boot only ISO we have a disk 1 ISO uh, so let's go with uh, FreeBSD 14 current disk 1 ISO right and since I'm going to be using this a lot I'm going to go ahead and go into my software folder and then go to my operating systems I've collected over the years I would I spent years collecting these things. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, add to bookmarks. Uh, wherever it went. Yeah, right here. And then I'm going to save right there. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. All right. And then it's going to go ahead and keep downloading.
and it's downloading. Just two minutes left. Obviously, the servers are pretty slow, so that's one of the downsides. Uh, the community isn't as big as are the other Linux distributions, but uh, FreeBSD, in my opinion, is the shice. It's the shit. Uh, if I was to ever use an operating system, it would be Gentoo. Problem with, and the reason why I don't use Gentoo is because it takes it's your next birthday to compile, unless you have like a super server to compile, which, you know, it sucks because like it's like the greatest operating system you can like re you can like compile everything you change set compiler options and uh you can compile like bluetooth in or out of the system it blows away like in my opinion like every distro the problem is it takes too long so free bsd would probably be my second go-to the problem with this is last time i checked their um their virtual machine capabilities weren't that good otherwise i'd be using free bsd for my main driver okay so it's downloaded right and now i'm going to go ahead and go to local install iso image or cd-rom and i'm going to click forward then i'm going to click browse and then after i click browse i'm going to click browse local and then i'm going to click downloads and then after i click that um i'm going to go ahead and go over to operating systems again i'm going to sort by uh the time and right here that's the one i've downloaded and I'm going to click, uh, you must select an OS, blah, 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 blah. So, BSD. This is good enough, right? FreeBSD 11, right? It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it has somewhat of an idea of what we're using. Uh, now, it's asked, saying, hey, you got up to 60 cores on this server and you got up to like 512 gigs of RAM. What do you want to use? How much of it? Give it to me. So... Uh, I'm gonna say for this I want to go ahead and use well let's use 24 cores you know that sounds pretty good right 24 cores and let's go ahead and use uh, 32 gigs of memory so it's nice and snappy right um, And then uh, the reason I'm not setting all the cores is because if I did, usually it's going to give a KVM uh, priority over other things that are running on the server unless you have like an FIFO scheduler set across the processes. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on forward. And where it says enable storage for this virtual machine, uh, create a disk image for the virtual machine. Um, enable storage for this virtual machine. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go down here, right? Uh, Actually, you know, so we can do this one of two ways. We can use a ZFS volume, or I can actually take out, you know, like some storage space that's like right here. Um, yeah. So I think I'm going to go ahead and, mm, uh, I think I'm just going to use standard storage. I'm not going to bother with like ZFS storage or anything for this. The thing's already got super fast drives in it. So it says uh, 2,188 gigabyte, right? So I'm going to go ahead and type in uh, 512 or uh, 128G here. Um, uh, create a disk image for the virtual machine image enable stored for this virtual machine right so right here it says uh 128 gigabytes right so that i don't know I, you know i think i'm gonna use more because let's go with 256 right let's go with 256 so i'm gonna go with 256 right and it says free bsd 13 here but that's not true we're running 14 now so i'm gonna put a free bsd 14 right and I'm going to obviously want to customize that configuration before install. So I'm going to go ahead and customize configuration before install. And I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Uh, would you like to start the NAT network? Yeah, sure. Why not? So I started the NAT network. Now keep in mind when you're using the NAT-based network, uh, if it's default, it's usually not going to be able to communicate with other things much nicely outside your network, uh, usually because it doesn't like to use the same subnet. And then it runs through another network driver, uh, which is the libvirt network driver and something else usually. And it causes some issues. So, yeah, um, there's a way to like unlock the bridge mode. So it's a lot more. I'll get into that later. Anyway, 
So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is since, hey, it's virtual network time, that's good, that's good, vert.io, right? I'll find it dandy, nice and snappy, cool and pretty. Uh, right, and we already got that over storage over there, so I'm just going to hit cancel. And right where it says this, I'm going to go ahead and choose Q35. Uh, you know, I like UEFI, so let's go with UEFI BIOS, right? So, would you like to apply the changes now? Yes, I would. Uh, OS information, I still don't like that 13 there, so let's go with the 14. Oh, okay, it's making me do that one. And yes, let's apply them configurations. Uh, I want to copy the host topology. Uh, now, shared memory. I haven't had too much luck on this a lot of times, so I'm not even going to bother with it. I'm just going to keep it at 32 and 32. Uh, I mean, as far as performance-wise and stuff. Uh, now, there's virtual I.O. disk 1 and the IDEC ROM. Obviously, I'm going to be installing FreeBSD, so I'm going to want that. And I'm going to enable my boot menu just in case as a safety net. Uh, storage size. Uh, yeah, I was going to be like, wait, 1 gig? Hold on. What did I do? What did I mess up now? What did I mess up? Okay, now we're good. Dbus, storage. Did I mess up anything? No, we're good. We're good. So everything looks pretty good. We're using standard display adapters, everything. And keep in mind, this is actually going across SSH. We're going to go ahead now and begin the installation. And it's going to go ahead and start installing. Oh, unsupported configuration. IDE controllers are unsupported of this QEMU binary system. Oh, so I accidentally messed this up. I was supposed to hit set up. Begin installation. Wow. I didn't even know they had that on there still. So as you can see, it's starting, right? And there's the FreeBSD installer. FreeBSD is probably one of my favorite operating systems. If, if man, if this thing had a virtual machine on it, I'd use this thing all the time because it does not fight with you. And it's really simple to use. I really like it. Uh, there are some things that are a bit different you have to get down, but it is probably one of the coolest operating systems ever. It also has some devil horns on it. So, it's probably pretty elitist at that point, right? So, the first thing we're going to do is, um, yeah, we're going to do boot installer. So, um, uh, I'm going to do boot installer. I'm going to do one and I'm going to okay. Oh, well, crap. Um, that's interesting. Oh. Huh. Let me reboot this. It's uh, kind of confusing me here. Uh, force reset. Yes, I want to force reset. I just got a flipper, by the way. It's awesome. Real awesome. So, for if y'all want to know uh, what I was. Uh, what we're setting this up on i'll give you a nice little peek here okay it's this uh this one right there it's that boy right there it's the nice sexy well what i consider sexy you know uh pretty sexy to me so um yeah so it's got a lot of ram 512 gigs. It's one of the best servers you can get. You pick up these things for probably like 500 bucks, 60 core, you know, tons of RAM. You can take it out how you want it. If you want something you don't have to spend a kidney on, you never want to upgrade again for your server, there you go. DL580 G8. If you can find out a recycler, there's a good chance you can pick one up for like 100 bucks or 200 bucks. Now, If you go, let's see, is it, is it, are we going, are we going, oh, we need to turn this thing on again. So, it's turned on again. Hmm. Let's force reset that again. I'm going to go ahead and jump into the boot menu here. So I'm going to go over here to boot maintenance manager, boot from file, oh, 
boot option. Um, SATA. Okay, so it seems it completely forgot the uh, thing that was in here. So, whoa, Billy, seriously? Okay, right now me and this thing ain't getting along too well, so I'm gonna force that off again. Oh, no, there it goes. Okay, perfect. Boot options. So we're going to want to boot that SATA drive first. And let's go ahead and power this puppy up. Now let's go ahead and dive into here real quick. There we go. Boot installer, enter. Okay, so I guess I just... I don't know what I did last time, but... So anyway, this is the free BSD installer. Pretty simple. Uh, if this is your first time using FreeBSD, you are going to need to get the hangout, but it's going to be a little different. You might be a little uncomfortable with it. Not the install, though. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to install. And it's going to go get, go through the regular console-based installation. So, um... Um... Now, here's the console-based installation. And then, um... So if we go here, go here, uh, United States of America, yeah, that's good. It's a good place to live right now still, thank God. Um, um, right there. Yep. Please enter a host name for this. So, uh, for now, I'm just going to actually fix the PC.net, right? I'm just going to do my server because I might actually use this layer. Now, it's saying what stuff do you want to install with this? Uh, this is your 32 bit library debugging. This is your 32 bit compatibility libraries. Uh, this is your base system. These are your ports. And this is your system source tree. So, you know what? I'm going to do all of them. Uh, base system debugging. Why not? Let's just do the whole thing. There's your virtual adapter. Would you like? Yes, I would. Yes, I would like to do DHCP right now. And we'll let it fire up and figure out what it wants to do. And we're going to make sure we did not download the wrong image. So I downloaded what? I think this one. Yes. Yeah, so we're good. We didn't download the wrong one at all. Yeah. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Now, uh, well, at least, I don't know how long ago, but uh, FreeBSD used to be, or still is, uh, it, well, it was definitely well known, and Netflix uses it because it has the best TCP ISP stack, which means it uh, hauls ass on the networking side, it pretty much throws hands with anything out there when it comes to networking and latency. So, um, if you go over to here, and you were to type in like FreeBSD, uh, uh, Netflix, you know, you can read how, you know, Netflix uses FreeBSD, and they use FreeBSD for the simple fact that, well, it's known for its networking to be, like, really elitist, really stable, really good. Whoever developed it, made it, knew exactly what they were doing. So, uh, one, uh, this is, uh, 192.168.122.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.
Uh, now it's asking us, you know, free BSD. Where do you want to get these downloads at? Uh, here, just yeah, we'll do the top one. So now it's down here, right? So it wipe the drive. It's into it. Also, ZFS is built into the free BSD kernel. Um, stability wise, it's probably going to be miles better than you know regular ZFS on Linux. I mean, this is free BSD, so generally stuff's done a little more professional. Why is that? I couldn't really tell you. I don't really know. But once you use the operating system, you'll see what I mean. It's my opinion. It's not a fact. It's just how I view it. And it's installing. Let me see if I can find some more information about that. There. Um. I don't know if they're still on top for nowhere. I believe they are because Linux came out with Rust and a whole bunch of other things, and a whole bunch of things got changed, and the kernel got way faster. So free BSD TC uh, net networking or Let's do TCP stack benchmark. Mm. F stack. Not exactly sure what this is. I'm guessing it's probably pretty cool though. That's Linux for you. It's always cool. All right. Okay, so let's ask ChatGPT, right? Is FreeBSD still known for its fast networking capabilities? FreeBSD is still known for its fast, although it is important to note that the performance of any operating system is of various factor. FreeBSD has a reputation for an excellent network stack design, efficient memory management, and high performance file system. Yeah. So uh, they're still obviously well known, according to ChatGPT. Keep in mind, this thing has like its data is like a year or two off when it comes to like historical events. So if I do uh, free BSD and I type in uh, for Onyx forms, and I go here, right? Uh, now these are where all the professionals and elitists go when it comes to Linux for a lot of the benchmarking stuff. Um, this is where I like to go to read news on like the latest software and stuff. So uh, right here, uh, Linux 6.3 BFQ gets tuned for multi-actuator drives. Uh, with the in-development uh, kernel, the BFQ IO scheduler has now seen some tuning for multi-actuator device drives. Um, now, Cloudflare outlines how they will rewrite uh, uh, Linux 6.3 brings crypto, uh, free BSD for blah, blah, blah. So somewhere around here, they have benchmarks. Well, they actually have benchmarks and all that stuff. Uh, like this uh, right here. Uh, Python 3.1 performance benchmarks are a huge per improvement. Google AMD, blah, 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 announced something open source root of trust. Uh, booting Linux of blah, 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 HP Dev 1. And then you go down here. And if you go to uh, Intel Arc Linux, yeah, there's more. And then uh, here's StarTech and um, let's see. Um, blah, blah, blah. So Trying to find out where this is at. Well, anyway, you get the point. Uh huh. A free BSD. Let's do benchmark for Onyx. Okay, now it'll come up. Now it'll come up. Yeah, here we go. Benchmarks. Yay, we found them, right? So if you go right here, here's benchmarks. Here's NetBSD, OpenBSD, FreeBSD. Uh, these guys are open BSD is known as the most secure operating system in the world and it is uh, developed by uh, I guess you'd say some of the most elitist guys out there uh, now now you're gonna see it loses in a lot of benchmarks and it absolutely kicks ass uh, like uh, here's open BSD uh, free BSD uh, fewer is better now, uh, the reason why OpenBSD is going to be a lot slower is because they're pretty insane with their security. So they're always pretty much going to be slower a lot of the time. NetBSD and FreeBSD. Uh, FreeSB actually uh, beats Linux in quite a few benchmarks uh, when it comes to actually a few very important things too. Uh, like here in Ubuntu, uh, more is better. 
uh, O2, uh, let's see, more is better, that's 4K video, look, they're like right up there underneath Clear Linux, Clear Linux, like Intel made, you know, the Clear Linux kernel, it's known as like, technically like the fastest kernel for most things, but I don't really like Clear Linux. Uh, there's FreeBSD, uh, 13.0, uh, Dragonfly BSD, uh, you know, free. Anyway, you can look at the benchmarks, and if you get down, there's quite a few of them where it actually takes first place pretty good, um, and does a really good job. Uh, the reason I like it is because it uses the original Unix philosophy when it comes to a lot of configuration and stuff, which you don't see in a lot of the Linux distributions now. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, so, we did enough talk about that, let's see where we are in the installation. So, the installation looks like it, uh, I went ahead and it's finishing up here. I just exit out my window. Oh, my exit out of one too many. Well, no, it's not a good idea, was it? Well, okay, open that back up. Back to FreeBSD there. So you see, it's pretty nifty, right? X right over, and then we're just gonna wait. So it's still chugging away at something, not exactly sure what, but we're gonna wait for it, right? We're gonna keep waiting. We're gonna be nice and patient, and we're gonna wait. Yeah, so it looks like it's going right there, and we'll just keep keep going. Oh, the installation. Would you like? Uh, no, I'd like to restart. Yeah, uh, select XPC net. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yes, yes. Uh, no, uh, no. Uh, IPv4 DNS. Let's do eight eight uh, auto. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Stripe zero disk. Uh... Now, oh, hold on. What the hell did it just say? Okay. Time to. Okay, so we're back to installing. Uh, again, uh, the problem I had before is when it was extract extracting the base, it said the checksum didn't match. So uh, I did some reading online. We're about to see if it works or not. Uh, one person said that it was because of uh, the EFI booting, and there's a few other people that said the same thing. So I'm just now making a confirmation to see if that's true or not. If not, uh, I'll just try downloading from a different mirror besides the default mirror it gives you for the package downloads. Um, air while fetching, blah blah blah, base, okay, address, uh, family, not supporter for base, de debug, okay, so, on that one, yeah, we just saw that uh, it was uh, one of the debugger packages that did not get properly done, so I'm just going to go ahead and do a force reset, and this is the, this uh, version 14.0 current just pretty much got released as one of them, anyway, here we go. So we're going to go ahead and redo it since it had a debug package. We're just not going to pick that debug package. Might be the mirror, might not be. I'm just not going to mess with it now. Um, okay. So I'm going to do lib, I'm going to do everything but the debugging packages. Okay. And it's installing those base packages again. The libraries, uh, the kernel, the base. And it's an extraction. 
And it seems to have worked. It seems to have passed the error I was having before. Okay, so uh, it went ahead and it finished the installation. And now we have a password prompt. Uh, so it's asking for a new password. So, well, I guess you could say we finished the installation, but I'm not sure if we can. This could be considered part of it. So, yeah, it's still part of it. See how it says free BSD installer? So, for the password, I'm just going to put my public password. For y'all that want to know, it's 1437 password. Okay. Okay. Read, disabling, enable. Okay. So, uh, enable pass uh, secure prompt, disable DD trace, uh, disable send mail, uh, clear temp clean on, we're going to do that. Clear temp, clear the temp file system on startup. See, these are just general different options, which is nice. BSD gives you these little extra options at the start. Uh, if you're going to host a server, I would definitely recommend FreeBSD, you know, so you got like either FreeBSD or Gentoo, in my opinion. Uh, so it's asking for a user. Uh, uh, now it's asking for the default shell. So uh, I'm used to Linux based systems now, uh, so I'm going to stick with SH. Home directory, yeah. Directory permissions. Uh, user password base of. Lock out the account after creation. That looks good. Do you want to add another user? root password add user root password okay so these right here are pretty much extra options see how it says final configuration so you go through them add user root password you want to set the host name the network the services set uh, daemons to run on startup daemons it's almost like demons but it's called daemons i still to this day wonder why they call it that but somebody made it like that um uh, set security options, time zone, install FreeBSD handbook, requires a uh, network. So right now it's saying it's bootstrapping the packages from there. I guess it's kind of like loading up a stage, like a stage three, you know, for Gentoo. to. 
Okay. So, right here, uh, it's back to this screen. Uh, apply configuration, exit installer. Pretty much came back here one time. System hardening, do you want to harden it? Do you want to do some network configurations? Uh, no, we're just going to skip it all. We're going to say we're done. Uh, the installation is now finished. For exit, would you like to open a shell in the new system to make any final manual modifications? No. Uh, reboot. So now it's going to reboot. Okay, and since we know it's good now, I'm going to do a force off. Uh, don't show me again, yes. And I'm just going to go ahead and detach that disk now. Uh, delete. And uh, now I'm going to hit play and go back there. And now we should just boot straight to the hard disk. Okay, and you can see the menu looks pretty similar to... Um, we're just going to do enter for the first one. looks pretty similar to the installation disk, but it's not the installation disk. And y'all are going to see why I love FreeBSD if y'all aren't already familiar with it. It doesn't fight you. And if you go to the forms, the FreeBSD forms, you'll see the, the way the guys think that they're all like top tier in this kind of stuff. They seem to be like way more advanced in... Uh, Linux and the BSDs and the operating systems there they have like a very um, the way they think makes sense I, I, that's the best way to put it um, so uh, if, if you go here uh, now where it says uh, login uh, let's just go ahead and go with the root now I don't remember setting the root password oh okay yeah and that was the same one that we said okay and this is your prompt see it looks a little older than most of the Linux prompts and it's more basic. Now, let me show you the main config file. So, nano is not found. So, for this, yeah, it's uh, package mantle is not installed. installed. Would you like to fetch and install it now? Yes. So, uh, your package management is going to be done with PKG. Uh, Debian, you know, it's apt, and uh, Arc is uh, Pac Man. Um, so it's saying name does not resolve so uh, if I do ping google.com see unknown host so I have config so it looks like yeah so our name server is here name server 888 Sorry, I'm a little noobish with um with with uh vim. So I'm going to do So I'm going to do vi Or I guess I could do an echo too. Let's do an echo. Echo name server. And let's just do 888. Let's go ahead and send that over to our uh, ETC resolve. And we're going to do a double arrow so it just adds. All right. Yeah, see, now we can ping it. So now our package manager is going to work. So the DNS wasn't updated, but it. Uh, the uh, adapter was configured properly. So now I'm going to do package install. I believe it's install nano. Let's see if I'm right. PKG install nano. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, so it still wants to do the package manager because it couldn't make a proper connection last time. Ignore the mismatch and continue. Ah, uh, yeah, we'll do ignore mismatch and continue. Why not? Uh, proceed with this, yes. So, there we go. Now we got Nano. See, the good old Nano. Y'all probably recognize. Okay, now let's say we want a um, let's say we want a package manager on here, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do a peak. I mean, let's say we want a a display manager, like a full fledged desktop and everything. So uh, there's XFCE four, there's GNOME, uh, and uh, the the BSD ports usually has all that in it. I can't remember if you have to add that or if it comes, but I guess we're about to find out. So right now I'm gonna go. Let's go ahead, actually let's do something basic, let's do a uh, package, well, what's a good one? XFCE4 goes pretty fast, right? It's, it's a good, it's a good mix of both worlds. Let's do, you know what, let's do GNOME. So let's try a full fledge. Uh, package, install, GNOME. So it's going to say, hey, it requires 3 gigs here, do you want to do it? Yes. So it's going to go ahead and do 3 gigs of data. It's interesting, it's like once you figure out all this stuff, I don't know if y'all remember, remember when AOL was around and we're on like 56k DOP and we used to get harassed every month with those AOL CDs, they used to send us like, I don't know, one AOL CD to the entire country every month. It's almost like the internet has evolved like at perfect timing with everything and technology is pretty interesting. So it's going ahead and it's installing them away. And it's going, it's going, it's going. Oh, I got a flipper by the way. Uh, if any of y'all know how to uh, send a, I'm trying to get it to brute force RFIDs quickly for like opening locks and stuff like that. And if any of y'all know how to send it to Bluetooth over the phone back to a server, have it decrypted and go back to the flipper zero. Uh, please message me in any way possible. You do not know how grateful I will be for that. As you see, it needs a lot of them. A whole lot of them. So yeah, with uh, 
BSD, after you use it for a while, you'll come to see how... You'll probably come to see, same way I did, like how everything is... It doesn't fight you, it doesn't fight each other, the operating systems... It's more basic, uh, but... It, it, the the one downside is the kernel is under heavy development like Linux. Linux the Linux kernel is under heavy development all the time, but it's also bloated. This is so in a lot of different respects. The kernel won't be as fast in a lot of things, but in a lot of things like certain CPU, I/O, and stuff, the kernel is actually faster in FreeBSD. But you are going to lose some more advanced features of the latest uh, Linux kernel. One other thing that's really good is the ZFS is built directly into the kernel bona fide stock when you install it so that's like a really huge thing if you're in a zfs it means stability uh if y'all have used debian and other operating systems like that you're going to notice that um uh sometimes the libraries will get switched around or library doesn't properly get updated properly and you'll have either like a mismatching symbol in a library or maybe an application won't run and you'll get a segmentation fault a lot of that stuff you do not have to worry about uh, on FreeBSD, especially with Gentoo as well. Gentoo also provides a really nice tool to re uh, to um, what is it to uh, redo all your uh, libraries and stuff. So if they become mismatched or anything, it will confirm they're okay. So uh, unfortunately, I'm on like a Debian-based distro. Well, it's it's Dev1, which is Debian-based, but it has systemd taken out. I hate systemd. It's kind of like a, it's like a, an overarching spider that uh, has like a, another system over the kernel. And a lot of people think it's like government intrusion and stuff like that. And it's like an NSA backdoor. So, and it takes over too many applications of the system. And the Unix philosophy is each package is to be for its own skill set, for its own purpose. But systemd kind of overarches and stuff. So it goes against the original philosophy of. Unix. So we're getting there. We're at 360 out of 498 packages installed. This is going to give us a full-fledged GNOME desktop environment, which is, you know, like the standard, the standard full-fledged Linux desktop environment that comes default on Ubuntu and a lot of other distros. Okay, we're at 470 out of 498. Hey, Martin, long time to run, no talk. What's going on? Ah, I've been hanging in there. I have to drive, sit down. How are you doing? Uh, actually, probably not that hard. Uh, the, if it shows raw, as long as the file system is intact and, and probably this part of the file system demo got damaged, uh, so that it just shows raw. But uh, you could do like a deep scan or a scan on it, and you could probably get the QuickBooks file back no problem. If I was to do it for you, I would charge you uh, five hundred dollars off the bat.
Yeah, yeah, that's the least I can judge. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, so looks like we're almost done. We're at the last part. Okay, so GNOME has been successfully installed in your system. For help on setting up as well as for answers to common questions, some issues, see FreeBSD GNOME. Okay, so GNOME is installed, right? Uh, now it's saying, note, your X configuration file is at blah blah blah. Your fonts path is at so and so. So and so and blah blah blah. That's all I need to know. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and... We're going to do a reboot. Okay. Now the purpose of this reboot is just to see if it boots in GNOME right away. I can't remember off the top of my head if you have to actually set what display manager, or what, what desktop environments uh, pop first, or if it automatically does it. So, uh, user one two three seven password. Okay. So start X, not done. Let's go nano etc. Okay, so I can't remember off the top of my head, so let's go ahead and check it out. Here. Uh free free BSD change uh desktop environment, right? Let's go here. Desktop environment. So we're going to go over here to the official source-based documentation. Uh, whenever you're working with stuff like this, you always want to go directly to the source. Because usually the source or the people that made the uh, software is usually the ones you can trust with um, the information about the software because it's coming from source. So you always usually want to go to source-based material. Uh, it's... It, now, FreeBSD, I guess it is a little different from a lot. Anyway, so right here, this is what I was saying is really badass about FreeBSD. Um, so the easiest way to do this to Ampleton mode, you see it's saying right here, all you got to do to make it be enabled is you get to rc.conf. RC and you're going to notice this file right here is the magical configuration file for practically everything when it comes to the BSD. So this is GNOME Display Manager, and this is GNOME. So we're going to take both of these, all right? 
Go back over to here. And I'm going to do gnome underscore enable equals and then capital yes. And then gdm underscore enable equals yes. Now, uh, whenever you're doing stuff that's enabled, if you'll notice, it's essentially unified uh, across the board for a lot of this stuff. Uh, the enable comes after the uh, lower slash and then whatever service. So you can see these are services, uh, like SSHD is a service. It's enabled that. MouseD is a service, NTP. So you're going to see the services are enabled like, like that, which is really nice. So your services, uh, your config, a lot of your configurations all here. It's nicely and neatly organized, not over complicated, it's not in 10 different places. It doesn't fight with each other. It's really nice. This is one of the reasons why I love, oops, we need to go ahead and uh, do that as root. So, same thing, we're gonna go back in here. Okay, so GDM gnome enable equals. Okay, so we got it. Now we're gonna go ahead and do another reboot, right? Since we did that. And we'll go back over and check that source based material too. Uh, right here, echo bin session, uh, exe user local bin gnome session, uh, chmod plus x, you know, session. You know, it's just, you just go down here and it's just, you know, giving you a basic rundown. Uh, a third method to use XDM as a display manager creates an executable X session. So they're just showing you, hey, here's an alternative method. Uh, GMO star M, a second method, blah, blah. So there's your second and there's your third method. Here's your primary method, which is the one I would use. Uh, it uses the same ETC F stab as your gen uh, general uh, Linux operating system or whatever flavor or distribution you're using. So you're still using that primary fstab file. Uh, it's configured the same way. It still has one, two, three, four, five, six columns. It has uh, what you're mounting, the mount point, uh, the, the, the type of mount, the options for the mount. Uh, do you want to have this file system scan or not? And the backup. So that's essentially uh, it for there. Let's go ahead and check out where we're at right now. Okay, we're back to the login screen. So user, 137 password. All right. Uh, now we're back to here. So we enabled it in there, all right? Excellent, let me see if I can start X. Uh, okay, so it hasn't started up yet. Oh, gnome display manager, GDM underscore enable, gnome underscore enable equals yes. So. Let's go ahead and go back in there and confirm I typed it right. Uh, GDM enable underscore yes, gnome enable yes. So yeah, that's all correct. All right. Um, okay. Okay, so this desk, right, okay, gnome too. So what I did is I did gnome. So let's go ahead, maybe I, okay. Okay, so I did GNOME. We're going to go ahead and do GNOME 2. They're, they're probably going to... Yeah. Okay, so it's already been installed. PKG search. GDM. So, good chance it might be our display manager. Let's go ahead and search. Okay, PKG install. GDM. Okay, so it's saying that's up to date too. So um, let's do another search. Free BSD. Remember, this is an uncut video. I'm showing you how I solve uh, problems when I come across them. So uh, free BSD. Start the display manager. How to? X display manager. Go here. Uh, free BSD handbook. Downloads. Get started. 
FreeBSD FAQ, Q, documentation, port planner, uh, articles. So it's not there. Go check here now. Let's do how to start GDM uh, through BSD. Now your uh, GDM is a display manager and that's like the login screen that first pops up. So he's saying Okay, uh, type start X in the command after you do your X in it RC. Okay. Okay. KDE requires mock proc to be okay. So they're saying there's right here. So let's check our F stab. I'm pretty sure it's already there, but hey, you know what? It might not be. Check it out etc F stab. Hey, you know what? It sure isn't. So let's go back over to our uh, GNOME GD, G, GDM FreeBSD uh, GNOME FreeBSD project. You go down package install and building from source um, yeah so uh, package install xorg let's make sure that thing's installed too you could just install I'm pretty sure it is yeah all packages are up to date right oh no 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 we don't have xorg in here that's a problem we need that Okay, so Xorg's installing. Then it's saying uh, the current user needs to be added to the group. So it's we're going to need to do PW group mod video dash M and then our user. And that's going to go ahead and add our user to the video. Now, a lot of times on Debian, you could still get to start, but it would go really slow and sluggish because you wouldn't have proper permissions. And that was back in a previous version before, and it probably wouldn't even start nowadays. But that's just from what I've seen. So, so PW group mod dash m username, right? And we still need that f stab for the display manager. So yeah, this is like an extremely professional operating system. In my opinion, like so. Okay. Say make sure your kernel is compiled with blah 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 support. Yeah, we're good. So uh, now pw group mod dash m. Uh, no, it's a uh, okay. So video and then dash m and then we're gonna do usr just like that. And then we'll go ahead and do group just in case like that. Okay. And then let's go nano x init rc. And let's do exes uh, c and then no, and then or actually let's do let's see what happens if we do gdm, right? User and so user one two seven password and nano dot x in it rc uh, and then right here. Uh, EXCC GDM Control S for save, exit, and let's just go ahead and do start X. So we did start X. Okay. Uh, bad display name, Unix, blah, blah, blah. 
Only root user can run GDM. So we'll do login root. So Okay, so if you look right there, it didn't take anything. So, um, root server auth auth access XKB are not failed to X could not resolve uh, key sim blah blah blah. Okay, so nano X in it RC. Let's just do gnome here. Oops. Uh, start X. Okay. X authority file does not exist. Package install GNOME. Go ahead and make sure XDG is installed. So PKG install X, XDG. Oops, XDM. Yes. So I believe we need to edit the bootloader file here. So this is one of the other files you're going to be editing that's a little different from the other distributions of Linux. This is your bootloader file. This is the files that are being loaded first for generally pretty much about anything. Boot. And then loader.com right here, right? So here's your ZFS, here's your crypto device, here's your kern, and we're gonna do kern. Dot, let's see what it was here. Uh, kern dot vty equals vt. So vty equals vt. Let's make sure we got that right again. vty equals vt. Uh, let's go ahead and save that. And then reboot. Okay, so as you can see, we put up the GNOME Display Manager right away after that. Now I'm not exactly sure where the default Display Manager is, but here, as you can see, let's go ahead and press Enter there, enter the password. And we're in our full-fledged GNOME environment. Isn't that badass? And we're on FreeBSD. So we have a GNOME environment just like uh, Ubuntu. 
but we are on free BSD. Um, now, it's not really that responsive to me, uh, and the reason for that is because I'm using a uh, I'm using the uh, uh, QXL video adapter right here. Uh, I can make it go faster by using like a uh, well VGA or Vert IO. Vert IO is essentially the best one. Um, yeah. So go ahead and open that up. And that's it. That's uh, your installation on how to do a free uh, BSD install from your uh, BSD installation ISO all the way to your desktop environment. I hope you all liked the video. If you found it helpful, uh, like and subscribe, buy me a cup of coffee. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. so remember this video is uncut. I left my mistakes in there so you can see how I handle stuff. Um, out.